Hello there. What's up? Solderers. So, uh, I'm going to be doing, well, sort of like a speed run of this particular circuit, which uh, some of you are doing for your assessment task. Uh, I'm going to post two videos in this form. This one where he's going to be like the full build unconstructed is going to be a long video. But then I'll also uh, upload after a smaller one which has like the constructions uh, faster and I'll try to keep it under the 10 minute format which is similar to the uh, building tutorial that I'm asking uh, for you to present. So you can see both different types of the videos. Uh, we will go through and we'll do our stock take. Uh, we'll have a look at our circuit and uh, we'll get soldering and we'll see if we can have it up and tested uh, with the lights flashing. Uh, then we'll have an additional video later which will uh, show how the circuit works through using some simulator software and other examples. If we see in the top right, we have the circuit diagram. Uh, this is the uh, particular circuit we're running here. Um, first thing we notice as we take this out, uh, when you look at other uh, kits online, uh, this has a L11 on it, which means that this actually has 11 LED lights on it. Uh, this is uh, a very standard, um, they either call it a chaser circuit or a waterfall circuit or a flowing circuit. So the LED lights are going to uh, flash in like some order, similar to like uh, other videos you've seen. Uh, the kits come, it's a very, very common kit, um, but the different companies design their circuit boards in different ways. Uh, this one, for example, there's, there's an extra LED light showing um, that the circuit is turned on. But there is no um, like connector. There is no connector over here, so we're going to have to uh, solder in some wires. So we'll start with our stock take. The first thing we have is the circuit board. So let me load up my Excel. Circuit board, and we'll we'll adjust this. There we go. We got one counts. We have no information for anything else. Cool. So we'll put that circuit board over there. This over here, this is a trim pot. So it's a potentiometer. And we do have some information over here. We have 205. So when it comes to trim pots, that means it's uh, 20 and then five zeros. So, so we're going to say it's a trim pot. We have one of those. Its values is a uh, 20 and 5 zero, so that should be 2 million. 2 million R. So it's as we as you rotate this, as you get like a screwdriver or a Phillips, whatever, and you turn this trim pot, you'll be adjusting it between uh, you'll be adjusting it between uh, zero and two million uh, resistance, which is going to be used later on in our circuit. Uh, next, we have our first of our IC chips. There we go. We see our IC chip. We see uh, the main value is so that when it comes to these IC chips, the information at the top is just the uh, company. So HYC is the company where it comes from, um, and then the other information is like their batch. The main thing at the bottom is the 4017 that uh, determines that this is a decade counter. We can look at the uh, document for that, but let's just put out uh, IC. Uh, we can call this, based on our circuit board, we know that this is uh, IC2. Uh, we have one, so 4017, which actually gives us, let's give us a new category over here. Uh, insert, we're going to say um, uh, label. So we can start to uh, label, it on, label it on our circuit diagram. And if we look over here in our circuit diagram, we see CD4017, which um, it's actually rubbed out slightly, but it does say CD. You can see how there's the C value, and it's a uh, <clears throat> there is a D underneath it. It's just rubbed out slightly, but CD4017, CD, and it is labeled as IC2 which matches our whoop, which matches our thing. Our trim pot, does that have a uh, bit of a location? Over here, let me get my high-tech pointing implement. It's over here, RP, which means uh, they're using the code for like resistor pot. 
a re resistor uh, potentiometer. Uh, so they're calling it RP. <coughs> Excuse me. So we have another IC chip. We'll get that out next. Now this IC chip should be our Again, we only care about the number at the bottom. Uh, so this, in this case, we care about uh, this number over here. Oh, where's it? Show me them. Show me some light. So it's this any number. Any five five five. So let me zoom in on my. So it says here any five five five, and then there's another n at the end. Probably just a, a revision number, but the main thing is the five five five. It's for that. So uh, any five five five, and it does relate to our. This is going to go in here. Maybe I see one. So it doesn't actually say that the NE555 goes here, it doesn't say anywhere on the board that, but this is one of those cases where we look at our circuit diagram and we see, we see, uh, on our circuit diagram we see, uh, over here, that's the 555 and so that's related to uh, this big circuit over here and it actually says IC1 on top of it, so we know that this is our other our other um, internal circuit. Next, we have a, a, a box of assorted goodies. We have a electrolytic capacitor. Now, unlike our last circuit, these are not these are all different values. So one UF fifty volts. So cap uh, one UF, and we know uh, this is an electrolytic cap. So we're going to say cap and say cap elect to be short for electrolytic, which means that um, the polarity does matter for us. And its location, uh, da -da -do, if we look, we see on our circuit board there's two locations for capacitors. One over here, one over here. This capacitor says, uh, this one over here says 100 UF. We know this capacitor is not 100 UF, so we can assume it can be uh, capacitor 2. But just to double check, let's look at our. This is a case we're going to look at our circuit board. Uh, and yep, here we go. Let me get that. Okay. If you look at our circuit board, we see over here. We see a capacitor 2, and it says it's got to be between 0.1 and 1. Well, that's what this is, and so that's rated as capacitor 2. So we can write that on the board as capacitor 2. Let's look at our next capacitor. This one should be, we can predict this to be our 100. There we go, 100 UF. Uh, we already know based on our circuit board that it's got to go into... Uh, capacitor slot 1, but if we look at our circuit diagram, it also says that over here. It says it's also going to be capacitor 1, so let's uh, write that there and 100 UF. Good, good, good. Next, we have a series of resistors. So we have two of these resistors, and the resistor banding over here looks like it is yellow, purple, red, and then gold. Uh, if we look up our resistor chart, uh, we can see that yellow is for uh, 4, purple is for 7, so it's going to be 47, and red is our uh, times 10, so these, these should be 470 resistors. And we can also double check that using our Let's just double check these values are 470. Maybe 
to see that over there. No, we can't. There we go. So, yes, 464 is within the 5% of um, 470. And so we know we have uh, two of these resistors. As for their location, let's refer to the so let's refer to our board over here. We don't see any locations for uh, 470 resistors. We see here over here our resistor 1 is measured as 1k. Uh, we see our other two resistors over here is resistors 2 and 3. They don't have any values. So for now let's just assume they're 470s but just to double check let's look at our uh, circuit diagram and we see here that resistor 2 and 3 are over here and they're both listed as 470s. So that is good information for us. So we're going to go resistor. We have two 470 uh, R, and then we're going to say that's R1 and 2. Good. Now we have our resistor. We have the last one. We have a single resistor. Uh, brown being 1, black being 0, red being uh, times 2. No. Let me load up my resistor chart just so I can get this. Let me see if I have it uh, loaded up here. Oh, don't have it. Disappointing. Here we go. So if we load up our resistor chart over here, our original colors, we'll look at the, the tiny camera. So we see here, we start with the brown. Our brown is 1, and then this is black, so that's 1, 0, and then it's going to be 1, so 10 times, 10 times 100. And that should be 10 times 100 would be 10,000. No, what am I saying? 10 times 100 is uh, 1,000. It's been uh, too long since I've been in the workshop doing normal maths. All right, let's check the video. Oh boy, okay. Testing with our uh, voltmeter over here, and we see, yeah, it's coming up as a value of approximately 1,000. I don't know what I was thinking. What was I, what was I thinking 10,000? This is a ridiculous. So 1,000, which matches our, it matches our value over here for R1, which is 1K. And so we can write that straight onto our thing here. And that is R1. Oh. A very good pickup. That's not R12, that's R23. Very good. The last thing we have is a array of LED lights. We're just going to So we know we have 11 on our circuit board. Let's see if we actually have 11 here. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we have eleven LEDs. I'll plug that to my ruler. Again, they look like five millimeters. Notice how these LEDs um, look slightly different to the LEDs that we we're using in our last circuit. These are just LEDs from different suppliers. 
Um, yeah, they they great. They change in a lot of values. Uh, sorry, just done appearance. But from the circuit, they should functionally be the same. For consistency, let's use all of the same LEDs from the same kit. And we'll write this over here. So LED, there's 11 of them. Uh, unlike the last circuit, they didn't give us any spares this time. And that's location is L1 to 11. Okay, so let me just zoom this out so we can maybe see circle board. So we have all our components there. So let's start putting our, now that we have our circuit done, I've already turned on my soldering iron to uh, get it to warm to the right temperature. Before that, let's start laying down the circuit. So when we do these circuits, I might, uh, I might also clip this particular part of the video here just to show um, how to put in IC chips. But we're going to start our circuit with an IC chip. So an IC chip is an integrated circuit, which means that inside here there's like, they can have like up to thousands of different uh, resistors, capacitors, and um, uh, transistors inside it. So it means that we can actually start doing stuff in our circuit. Uh, it's a lot smaller. So this over here is the same as if we were to put this on a normal circuit board, it could be like massive, even the size of like an A4 page. And you can see how by in getting a circuit integrated into this uh, small device, it really benefits um, for regarding to electronics. Um, integrated circuits, um, base, the basic versions of them, which are like these ones, they come in these setup setups called DIP or a dual inline package. Which means that so dual meaning that it's got um, it's got connectors on both sides, so that's the dual. And the inline package means that this is a so it's set up in a one direction. There are other uh, there are other integrated circuits that are called a quad package where they're in a square shape. And then there's uh, other integrated circuits that are more similar to like your computer CPUs where all the connection ports are underneath. So when we're talking about uh, IC chip, it's important to know what type of uh, package it is because that would depend on if we have to replace it, we have to replace it with the same size and if we want to get like a mount for it, we have to get the same size mount. So what I'm actually going to do here is under our naming of the values of the circuit, I'm actually going to write that here. We know that this is the decade counter. We can count how many pins it is. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're going to say eight times two. So this should be a dip Dip 16. Uh, let me just double check that. If I look at the PDF for 4017, pretty sure it's Dip 16 and not Dip 8. Yeah, 16 dip um, for 16 dual inline package. And this over here, this only has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's going to be uh, dip 8. So just so we know the actual size of this component. When it comes to soldering our components, these are, these are very, uh, these are not, um, so these are polarized, definitely. So each one of these pins has a different um, output into the system. And so later when we learn about how this system works, we're going to understand what each, which each one of these outputs uh, mean. So that means it's actual soldering onto the circuit is very important. If we look at the uh, DIP package itself, um, apart from the, the legs and the, the underside, if we look at the top, again, we see the, uh, we see the information. Up the top of most um, chips, you get the constructors information. Uh, HYC is the company. This would be their um, batch number, or their maybe their particular model number. Uh, and E4 is just these are all um, artifacts showing what, like how the chip was made and where it was made. The main thing is at the bottom, the CD4017 just means that this chip will function 
as a CD4017 uh, logic family, which means that no matter who makes a chip around the world, no matter which company you are, if you have a chip that's labeled CD4017, it's supposed to act in the same ways. In all, all the pins should be acting as the same no matter who you get the chip from, uh, for the most part. So we're saying here this CD4017, it says this company over here made a um, CD4017, which happens to be a decade counter, and we'll go into more detail about that later. Over here, this over here is the notch, and that is so we can align this up with our circuit board so we know which direction our chip is going to be placed. So this is a notch over here, this relates to the notch. the notch in our circuit board over here, so we know that our circuit board has to go in this direction. And same thing with our same thing with our 555 timer, it also has a notch over here, and we want to align that up with that part of the circuit. So when we're going when we're soldering our circuit, putting this in, next thing we notice is our legs are slightly wider than the holes for them to go in. If I put these in over here, Right, if I put in, if I put, oh boy, if I squeeze in some of these legs, we see it's actually too wide. So this is where you're going to have to like uh, bend the legs to uh, get them in. I would like either get a pen or a like a, a skewer or some sort, something, just to give the legs a slight bend uh, to put them into location. This is also, this may have got damaged in, um, this may have got damaged in transport. As you see here, I've actually damaged one of the legs. So in this case, I'm going to get... Uh, a pencil or a pen, and just try to straighten it out. You can use your hands if it's uh, if it's not too serious a bend. Otherwise, if it is a, a serious bend, you may have to get some sort of pliers. Uh, be careful, be uh, gentle as you unbend the legs, because if you bend it, if you constantly bend and rebend, uh, it is a metal and it will eventually uh, snap. So we want to be careful uh, with that. So over here, I have one side of the legs in. And then I'm just going to get a I'm just going to get a pen and I'm going to try to bend all the other legs in so they all fit in. Ah. So I got the legs in, but I didn't even follow my own rule. <laughs> Uh, I put it on the wrong side. So luckily I haven't soldered yet, this is where I'll do an inspection and I'll notice my mistake that I have it in the wrong direction. But now that I've already bent the legs, it should be easy, it should just uh, slide in. There we go. So this is uh, already in. Now before I start soldering, um, it's going to be easy for me to bend the legs of the 555 timer as well, so I'm going to do that now just to um, see that it's uh, just bending it, bending the legs enough so they uh, go in. Uh, it's just going to be easier than before I start soldering. And that's all we've got to do to prepare this circuit before we can start just laying the stuff down and start soldering. When it comes to these circuits, I would always start by soldering the IC chips first, and I would always start by doing the most complicated uh, IC chip because if we look at it, when we get to the underneath here, we see it's actually the closest components you've dealt with so far. And we want the most space possible uh, for, to move our soldering iron around, and we want the IC chip, is, it's lucky because it's a flat component, let me just move all these, it's a flat component, so if we flip the circuit upside down, um, we want uh, the IC chip to be flat against the surface at the bottom, so it gives us a nice soldering uh, situation. Let me get some, uh, let me get some random parts to hold, hold this up on this side. There we go. All right, so off we go to solder. Are you in? Are you by any chance in view? There we go. Let me just move my solder into a safe position, and let me put water in my soldering iron sponge. And I have my safety goggles on, 
and I have my window open with good ventilation. My hands are in a nice location, there's nothing uh, interrupting the soldering iron. And we're ready to do some soldering. Turn the light off on. Let me turn the light on. Nice. Okay. So I can give you a. Is it worth worth doing a focus? Probably not. Alright. So when it comes to doing this, let's just worry about getting one of the corners soldered in. Because once we get one of the corners soldered in, once we get one of the corners soldered in, um, and the other corner. We know that the IC chip will hold its, it'll, it'll like glue itself to the circuit board, so we can then solder the rest of the circuit, and we don't have to worry about like propping up the component. So it's the same as soldering any other component. I'm going to hold our soldering iron to it for three seconds, then we'll introduce the solder and then remove it. Um, we this is a circuit that we this is a component that we do not want to overheat because um, obviously we don't want to ruin that delicate internal uh, structure. So one, two, three. There we go. So now I've done the two corners. Everything's great. If we see the other kits online, we see that they have a they have like a device to uh, like a bed to store these chips in. That has its own uh, advantages. Obviously, it's more expensive because it's an additional part, and because we picked the most affordable of the circuits, we didn't have um, we didn't have it in this one. But the, one of the advantages that the, that has is as you're soldering your circuit, it gives you more freedom um, or more it helps you make up for mistakes because if you overheat it, it doesn't have any delicate components in it. It's just like a um, it's just like a a, a piece of metal just holding, uh, just making like a clamp for the circuit to put in later. So you don't have to worry about overheating your circuit because but because we have this particular circuit, and you are all so skilled at electronics. We got the one without the dock, so we can practice. That was a bad one. Remember to uh, slowly exhale so the fumes don't go all into your face. All right, let's give this thing a quick inspection. That's probably a better view for you. Give this thing a quick inspection. We see uh, some of the joints look a bit messy, such as this one over here. But as far as uh, soldering, we see they've all connected fully to the copper circuit. Uh, there's no short circuit, so this should be a fully functional uh, device. All right, let's put in the 555 timer. I'm going to want to make sure uh, the notch lines up.
inspection, we have all those parts there. Chips themselves are at top. Okay, so now we can just start loading in components. I'm going to save the potentiometer for last. Um, probably the potentiometer and the capacitors will be the last two things I install because they're the most bulky and the highest. Uh, I'll go with the resistors. So this over here is the 1K resistor because it has the red as we see by our chart there. That is yeah, our 10 times 100, so the 1000. Let's bend the legs. Actually, to save time, let's just put in all our resistors. Same approach, we're going to slightly bend out the leg so it just holds itself in. Now uh, we get our R2 and R3. So these, 40, these 470 resistors are used just to um, limit the current flowing through the LED lights. This 1000 resistor over here is actually used to control how fast it's used in, conjunct in conjunction with the potentiometer to uh, control how fast the lights are going to uh, rotate. So anytime in a circuit you see something like either 470 or 330, anything that's within a resistor of that range, usually look it's usually going to be associated with your LED lights because if we did our when we did our calculations in the classroom we saw that for 5 volts approximately, uh, an LED light needs about 300 to so something around 200 to 300 um, resistance to uh, bring it to the correct milliamperage and so that's why they always err on the side of caution by doing a slightly higher um, resistance and so any, any resistors that's usually that value it's usually associated with uh, some LED lights so if we have to ever reverse engineer where a resistor belongs we can do that. Uh, for this particular circuit I'm confident in my work so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to cut all these uh, things over because I know it's going to be uh, difficult when I do my um, when I do my LED lights pick up all these scraps Alright, the next component we have is the uh, LED lights themselves. So this particular model of LED light is annoying in the sense that it doesn't have, this particular model doesn't have the flat edge on it, which um, that's why I personally dislike these uh, type of LED lights because when our legs are sold on it's going to be, we, we can find out what the negative is, you can look at um. You can look at the actual image. Let me show you. Uh, let me put a dark background behind it. If you actually look at the LED itself, you see that it has a like an inf uh, an internal structure, right? It has like that. Uh, one side is wider than the other, and that is that is the common. All LED lights are made that way. It's just uh, like how the it's just how the manufacturing process is. And so you can also by seeing the LED light see that the um, the larger side, let me turn the light off for this, the larger side of the LED light, so we see over here this is the, the larger side of the internal structure, is connected to the shorter foot. So even if we cut these flat we can use the fact that we know that the larger side of the LED light, like the internal part with the, the metal, that part of the LED light is going to be on the a negative sign. We can always we can always use this. We can always compare to another LED for that. If you ever forget how it works, so you can look at a fresh LED. But fortunately, they have given us positive and negative terminals on our diagram, so we can uh, just relate that. We know that the longer leg goes into positive. And put in for this particular circuit, I want to go all the way to the bottom. I want to bottom out my LEDs, so I'm just going to put them through. One of the uh, one of the downsides of this particular 
type of LED is uh, they roll. I just had one of them just rolled off my desk. So I'm going to pick that up. I'm wondering if I even have to bend it. My, I have a theory. I'm going to see if I can just place all these LED lights and then uh, just rest the circuit upside down to hold them all into place. Alright, so we've got all our lights, and I'm just trying to uh, just trying to rest the circuit in place, seeing if that works. Uh, the answer is somewhat. <laughs> oh, did it come with a spare LED light, or am I, am I missing one? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Oh, it must have come with a spare one. One of them just rolled off. Another option is, um, when it comes to actually doing circuits, do whatever you can to use to your advantage to um, make your life easier. So in this particular case, I'm going to get a piece of sticky tape. Ah, it's not going to work. I think unfortunately the only option is to actually bend the circuit into place with a bend the legs to stop the circuit from um jumping around. I mean if you want to take time, if you do these all one at a time, you can probably do it uh you can probably get all the LEDs aligned perfectly that way. At least now they're not going to go out. I'll flip over the uh, the board. Let's get some solder. And uh, let me again. Let me get you some light. Get off. There we go. Nothing immensely interesting about this part. Uh, we do want to make sure that we only heat up the metal components. Uh, that is the exposed copper and the in this case the legs of the soldering iron, sorry the legs of the LED lights. We don't want to put, um, we don't want to make our soldering iron touch the green parts of the circuit because uh, that, that coating it's not very, uh, it's not as heat resistant as other parts and as soon as that melts it uh, opens up opportunities for our LED lights or any components to short circuit and create problems with our circuit and our circuit might not um, our performance of our circuit could be affected, and in some cases, 
make the circuit completely inoperable, so we want to fix that. Some of these, I'm going to improve some of these. Some of these are not going around the entire circuit. Since we're not putting enough solder onto them. Need extra light. Alright, so we have all our LED light components soldered in. When we look at the top, it doesn't look uh, that disgusting. <laughs> uh, definitely it's not the perfectly aligned circuit, but I'm trying to get this thing out as fast as possible. Uh, if you really want to change the way your circuit is, um, you can. Careful, because you have your fingers close, but if you heat up both of the, uh, see if you heat up both of the um, ends of the LED light at the same time. Yeah, I'm not going to get this on the smaller camera, but if you heat up both sides of the LED light at the same time, uh, it's going to allow you to like uh, push it in with your other finger. So there's a more advanced. Um, once you're confident with soldering in general, so let me see if I can get this one on the camera. So what I want to do is this particular light over here. This one over here, I want to fix it by putting my soldering iron on both. So I'm touching both the pieces, so they're both going molten. And then I do that and it allows me to... Uh, sometimes, there we go. It allows me to adjust the light, but I think uh, for the most part, that one's way off. I need to fix that one. Only a few of these lights need to be fixed. And like I said, if you do them all one at a time, you can solve that problem. Oh, that one, we still need to fix it even more. Alright, I think that's enough. I think well, the only way we'll find out more is when we uh, test them. But I'm going to keep these ones exposed until I finish the testing because I may need to do some adjustments with the LED lights. And we still have one spare. Yay, I love having one spare. Alright, so when it comes to capacitors, let's get our 100. Actually, no. Let's do the potentiometer first. We see the potentiometer goes into here. RP, R pot. We see we have three pins. Uh, we plug it in. Uh, these are thick components, so that means we're going to put in some more heat when we come to soldering them. What the hell are we going for time? Oh, we just hit 45. Interesting. I uh, put in the solder too soon for that one. 
So it said for these large figure components, similar to like the terminal ends for the um, similar to say the terminal ends on the similar to the terminal ends that we were dealing with our last circuit, we want to give this more, maybe uh, five seconds. So one, two, three, four, five before we give it the solder. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Now we have Ah, we have two J's. We will uh, deal with those soon enough. Uh, so we have our capacitors, we have our 1, and we have our 100. And we're plugging in the white part to the the white parts match up. So the white part on the circuit is the where the negative line is on the the main capacitor. Oh no. Here we see I have made a mistake. Alright. We know how to deal with this. We get our solder sucker. We heat this up and then we go a hey. presto it's completed and we can throw out right that is all the pieces older that we uh sucked up sucked up all right so we flip over capacitor is done the last thing we have to do is our dc voltage so for this i am going to You should have in your kits. You should have some um, red and you should have some red and black wires in your kit, so you can do that how you see fit. I don't have. I only brought home a roll of red wire with me. So what I'm going to do is one of the wires. I'll expose it first, but I'm going to put uh, I'm going to put the tape along one of the wires. So, and so we can know that the the black wires are always going to be the negatives, and that way the wire that's not the black is going to be the positive. So I'll put the tape on the the positive wire just so I know how to I'll plug it up to my power supply, and then I will test it on a. I'm going to put nine volts into it because if it, this works on nine volts, it means any student that is a uh, using a 9 volt battery, uh, their circuit should work. I right, so have my two wires, let's see how much we need. Again, so you should probably, you will have, um, you personally will have a red wire, red cable, so you can just uh, use your red, use a red cable and a black cable, or even if you don't have red cable, you should have two different coloured cables. But I don't. So there we go. I have my two cables. I will solder the black cable into the negative. In my case, my quote unquote white cable into the positive. All right, so this thing's almost ready to go. So the last thing we see on our circuit, we see we have these. 
which is the up button up way for you. There we go. Uh, let me turn that off. Okay, so if we look at our circuit, the last thing we see is we see these letters J over here. So we see J1 and J2. This means jump. So we need to actually make a jump wire. So a jump wire means that when they designed this circuit, they had no way to easily, no way to uh, cheaply, uh, find a way to get the circuit to link from this area over here to over here because like they couldn't get the solder to go around. Uh, so they had to. So what you can do in a circuit is you can make a, a hole for us to put it in a component, and tell somebody to put in a jumper cable between this point and this point. So we can do that. We have our wires. Let's just uh, make to be the wire for this one. The color doesn't matter for the wire, so just use whichever wire you have the most off really. Um, the size is fairly small. two wires you want to expose to ends now in theory you don't even need to use a sealed wire if you have a um, if you have a rod if you have like a a piece of off cut from a capacitor you can use that okay I'm gonna show I'll show both methods so one method is we can just put in a, a wire over here So we see over here I have a wire in, I put this wire into J1, J2. Uh, just, just going to bend it into place so we can actually uh, solder. In this particular circuit it is very close to uh, some of the switches, so sorry, some of the LEDs, so we just want to... I just wanted to, to lock it in place so I can uh, solder it effectively. Ah, clean. Very dirty. Right, so that's using a wire. Uh, and let's do a scenario. Let's say you don't have access to a wire. So what we do, we can use these endpoints. So I'm going to use, I'm literally going to cut off uh, the end of one of these capacitors. Let's say this capacitor over here. So we get access to it. Here we go. Right. I want you to get on camera, please. Don't be shy. So this capacitor over here, just cutting its foot off. Uh, and I don't want it to fly across the room because I need it. So I have this uh, have this capacitor piece over here. I'm just going to bend it, either using my fingers or uh, perhaps roll it around a pencil or something so you get it to the right shape. And so that's the approximate shape I have. It's like a C shape. And it is going to be, uh, in this particular case, it's going to be difficult to feed it in. So if you have any tools to your advantage, if you have tweezers or something, then again, you also have smaller fingers, so you can do it that way. I just put it in. And as I put it in, it just slid itself down. So that's the component there. Just like with our uh, LED lights, we might have to, uh, well, we definitely will have to bend this into a, where are you? There you go. So this is the component over here, and so we just want to bend it into place so it locks itself in, so we can uh, solder it and it doesn't fall out. Hey, if you don't have spare wires around, you could always just use that. So efficient. Doesn't it feel so much better to use like every part of your circuit? If you actually look at um. If you ever have a look at it, if you ever open up like old circuits from like um, like VCR or even old DVD players, um, you'll see they have a lot of those jumper cables everywhere along their circuit, just because they didn't have the, they didn't really like having 
if you don't have that jumper cable, the op other option is to have like multi-layered uh, circuit boards, and that of that often gets expensive because like it almost doubles. Actually, I think it more than doubles the cost of every uh, uh, of the circuit board to make another layer. So often it's just easier for the manufacturer to say no. Yeah, um, it's just cheaper for us to put a jumper cable in here and to get the soldering. I have to do that. So it looks like we have everything plugged up here. I am now going to plug this up into my power supply so we can get some testing and then see if it works and then we can uh, clean it up. So this will be our positive and this will be our negative and what voltage are we running at? Oh, we have something. So let's go, this is 9 volts. So the good news is if we have 9 volts we are able to get a uh, circuit to work. So if we have a look at what's happening in our circuit so far, oh, very very bright lights, Look at the maybe we'll just look at the main screen for now. So we have our lights going through, they're nice white lights. Uh, we see over here we have the lights are, are rotating around and this light over here seems to be uh, on or off depending on whether the first five lights or the last five lights are on. So when we do our breakdown into what the circuit means, uh, we'll go into that. I'm just getting out some sort of a screwdriver so I can rotate this trim pot. You can also you can also rotate the trim pot with your hands. It just looks better on camera. I use a screwdriver. So we have our trim pot over here. Let's see what happens as we adjust it. So, ooh. If we adjust it, it goes real slow. Does it even move? Yes. So it goes real slow and uh, rotates. So that's what happens with the 2 million when we go in the fast. Oh, then we go too fast. So that's, that looks like the fastest we can go with this particular circuit. Oh, and I just disconnected it. That's what we see here. And what we're going to do is when we learn about, um, when we break down the circuit, we can see what we can, what val what components we can actually change to change the way that the lights are going to be on. So uh, we'll go into more detail into that. I'll make another tutorial. Uh, this is the, the long view tutorial. You know what? i got a minute or so. Let's clean up our circuit because a, a clean circuit is a happy circuit. Maybe I, maybe I think sometimes I should start like an Instagram page, which is just um, you know people take like Instagram photos of like their food, all printed up. I should just take a uh, Instagram photos or of my um, circuits and do it like how they do like the camera that's on like the moving base with like some traditional vlog music, the same royalty-free vlog music that's in every single vlog. I think my phone is going crazy because I'm about to, I have a class about to start. Alright, uh, the last thing is the wires. So, important things. Students might forget the this circuit is a bit tricky, it has these two jumper cables. Right, that we have to supply. Uh, when we solder in our IC tubes, we want to make sure that the knobs or the, the notches uh, match up. Uh, the LED lights don't have the flat part on them, so we have to use the we have to use the uh, the short length of the the feet to know if that goes to the negative end. Uh, if not, we can also see the image of the, what the side of the LED. That's not picking up on my camera, but if you look at the side of an LED light, they all have the same internal structure and if, if it's a transparent LED light, which we're lucky these are, we can use that to determine the um, which direction the LED lights are in. Um, 
and then that's it. That's this is our lovely chaser circuit. I will see you next time with more videos. Good luck with your own one. Bye.